In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can plan your next year and create lifestyle design. Now, given the recent pandemic, do you still think it's advisable to plan? Well, find out in this video and keep on watching. If you don't know who I am already, my name is Michael Tabaradi, coach and mentor, and I help self-starters and ambitious professional millennials improve their productivity, enhance their performance, and live their life on purpose. Now, if this is the first time you've checked out my YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can find more videos like this. And remember, all the links in this video are in the description below. Now, let's get to it. Now, regardless of what happens in terms of our external environment, planning helps you to anticipate or at least prepare for specific challenges and successes that you have in your life. And so this is why I definitely advocate for some sort of plan. Now, you can't plan for everything, but you can get to a point of understanding what your rhythm should look like. Now, of course, this global pandemic has really created what I call the Great Reset and put us in a situation where we've had to reevaluate what we're doing. But especially as the new year is almost upon us, we need to get to a point of understanding how we can better influence ourselves or our future selves for the next coming year. So hang tight, make sure you've got a notepad and paper or your notes on your phone and let's get to it. Now, when you actually do this stuff, there's a number of things that you need to consider. Do you want to do it by yourself? Now, I like to do it by myself because I need to reflect and go through the process of understanding different questions that I'm answering in order for me to be more effective. But you may want to get your accountability buddy involved somehow, or maybe your sibling or your partner. It's totally up to you, but use a method that works for you. Also, you wanna think about how are you recording this information? Are you going to be using a journal or are you going to be using your notes? Are you going to be using something else? Are you going to be a bit more creative and do something on the wall or, okay, maybe not on the wall with crayons and stuff, but at least doing something creative that really helps you understand what you need to be focusing on. So think about those things before you actually get started. It's very important to make sure that you do this in a comfortable way and that you're in an environment that is quiet and conducive to you actually completing this specific task. Now you need to decide when you wanna do your review. Most people do it before New Year's. I like to do it before my birthday. So you need to decide what your sort of 365 sort of review looks like. And so with that in mind, decide what day you wanna be focusing on. Following that, you wanna ask yourself some specific questions. So for this full year review, you need to ask yourself, what has this year taught me so far? Number two, you also need to think to yourself, was I being true to myself? And the third thing is, how can I be more authentic? What do I need to do to be more authentic or more true to myself? When you really pinpoint these questions, when you really understand this, you get to a point of understanding what you haven't been doing very well. And again, you can ask yourself another set of questions, and this could be part of your six month review or part of your full review, totally up to you. You need to ask yourself, number one, what worked well? Number two, what didn't work well? But number three, what do I need to improve on? But this insinuates that you had some sort of plan before, you had some sort of goals before in order for you to ask those questions. And again, if you haven't had that sort of structure in terms of your goals and stuff, then you may need to go to my next point. Now, following on from the last point, I stated that you need to be able to get to a point of understanding what worked well, what didn't work well, and what you need to improve on. But if you never had any themes or goals or plans from the previous year, maybe you need to get to a base point of understanding what you need to be focusing on. So I like to use the Wheel of Life. I've spoken about this before. And effectively, what you need to do is get to a point of understanding what your satisfaction is for different areas within your life. And so once you understand those satisfactions, maybe let's say 10 is really satisfied and zero is not satisfied, then you need to understand what do you need to do to get to an eight, nine or 10 and work backwards? What are the key objectives and key aims that you need to fulfill to at least improve your satisfaction score? Now, again, the wheel of life is just an arbitrary thing that you may do each year, so to speak, but this will help you understand what you need to do going forward. And then there are some things you could do following that in order for you to be a bit more structured, but creating still a level of flexibility as well. Again, once you understand what your goals and aims look like for these different categories and areas, you want to develop some sort of predictability. So there are a number of ways you can do this. Number one, you can use a digital Gantt chart. So again, if you use Google Sheets as an example, you can create a Gantt chart that has different objectives and tasks that show you what your quarter is going to look like. Number two, you can actually use a wall planner. So 
I used a, a wall planner in previous years and effectively I'd get sticky dots and each color would represent a different theme or area and I would stick on there exactly what my quarter was going to look like for the following year. And I'm telling you, it really, really helps in terms of productivity. The third thing you can do is making sure that you link all of the stuff that you put on your Gantcha and or wall planner and put it onto your Google Calendar. And these things in your Google Calendar could be things that are events, meetings and key sort of activities that you need to be focusing on. And again, the last thing is making sure that you have a Trello board that you stick to and you look at on a day-to-day -day basis where you're only focusing on one to three items at a time per day. It doesn't even need to be per day. You don't even need to create that pressure, but you just need to have something there in the doing part in order for you to actually get stuff done. If you haven't checked out my Kanban board process, then you can check out this video. And again, you'll see the links below in terms of my Google Calendar video and other stuff that I've spoken about relating to this video. Just to give you an idea as well, in terms of that predictability, it may involve things such as business activities, health-related activities like exercise. It may also include goals in terms of finances and meetings and events as well. So think about this stuff. This has been really, really useful in terms of my business because again, I can mark out marketing activities in terms of what I need to do quarter by quarter. So think about that stuff and get started with your own Gantt chart as well. So now you've got your rhythm in terms of your events and your activities and everything else. You also need to get some structure in terms of making sure you're accountable. So what I was talking about before was self accountability, but you need to create a different level of accountability. So pre-populate or pre-schedule and pre-agree different meetings with your, again, siblings and or partner or accountability buddy or your mastermind group or your coach or mentor as well. So this needs to be some sort of weekly monthly, quarterly activities that enable you to be prepared. Because again, if you do this in advance, then you know you're set for making sure that you're going to be accountable to some of these goals that you're setting as well. This is how you actually predict success. This is how you create the certain level of accountability. And again, if you want to check out my accountability partner video, make sure to click it on the description below or check it out in the description below. And again, following on from this, We've got the foundations at the beginning in terms of understanding what it is that we need to be focusing on. We also went on to understanding what the sort of structure looks like, and that came down to your own accountability and accountability with other people. But finally, we need to understand how we can pay for stuff. And so it's really important to make sure you do some sort of review or put in time to do reviews on a monthly or quarterly basis. Understand what money comes in, what money comes out. What do you need to pay for in advance? What do your savings goals look like? Once you have this clarity, again, regardless of what happens in any sort of situation, again, you're gonna to have to cater to those things, but you'll be at a point of clarity and understanding so you can be better prepared to know how to act going forward in the future. If you wanna check out my video on personal budgeting and finances, again, click on the link below and check out that video because I go in depth in terms of what you need to be thinking about. Plans are great and all, but if you don't have the right level of habits and if you can't stick to those habits that enable you to get success, then all of this is pointless. So in my next video, I'm gonna be focusing on how you can stick to your habits and manage them effectively so you can actually truly get the results that you need to get. As always, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Understand, reach, and expand. Peace.